two of the boats left at 4.30. At six, we're leaving, uh, we're leaving now. Uh, it's gonna take us about nine, 10 hours to get to Middle Percy, and we don't want to arrive there in the dark if we can help it. So, uh, out we go. Oh. Haven't even had a cup of tea this morning. We're about to punch into the swirl. But, um, had a bit of a rocky night in Pearl Bay. Let's hope tonight's better anchorage. Yeah. again new island new day we're coming up on the Percy group this is South Percy we're going to Middle Percy tonight it's quite well known and a, and a very popular stopover point on the way to the Whitsundays and there's some very interesting things which we'll show you on the island which I'm sure you look forward to all right here we go We're anchoring along with lots and lots of other boats in West Bay on Middle Percy. It's absolutely beautiful tonight, but it has got a bit of a name. It can be quite rolly with a bit of swell that comes in, but it's gonna be a beautiful night. Now just in on the beach is the home of the Percy Island Yacht Club. And it is a yacht club with a difference. Our family's been here many times. Uh, father's boat was Dancer, so we've got all his dates, and they're deceased now. And my brother, and our boat, we replace the tag every time we this come. Is the yeah. Yep, this is the family plaque that we replace every year with the new dates on. Very good. Well, I found the bit that I like. I still haven't found the oldest plaque. It's supposedly been going for about 60 years, so I'm trying to find the oldest one. But whoever put this giant hammock here, Excellent. The A-frame is like a magnet, as all the oddies come ashore. It's a place to congregate, tell our stories, and make new friends. Look at that. So do you want to explain to me what they are? What is it? It's mermaid. And what do you buy with mermaid money? You don't buy it. You can't buy mermaids. Because I'd collect it if you could buy mermaids. Have you tried the hammock? The ha you haven't seen the hammock? No, the hammock, the deal, it's big enough for all of you. <laughs> this place has something about it that brings the kid out in all of us. I want to run around like these kids. It's like being on Treasure Island. 
and you can see what draws yachties here. So boats have been pulling in here since 1804 when Matthew Flinders named the island and pulled into this very bay. And the A-frame was built 20 years or so ago by Andy Martin, the original tenant on the island. Um, he uh, was an English pentathlon athlete that came out here after World War II and settled. Took the plaques? Uh, the plaques, well, this little hut down here has a telephone in it a hand crank telephone used to connect with the homestead up there. Uh, back in the 70s was the earliest I was here. Used to supply you with goat meat if anyone wanted goat meat for the boats and that. Um, we used to leave our plaques, the name of your boat, on something in there. It's now flowed on to the A-frame, which is, as you've seen, it's massive. If you think the Percy Island Yacht Club is amazing, then just on the edge of the beach is a two-storey treehouse with Kate and her husband that are living in it at the moment while they do some work on their boat in the lagoon. It is just amazing. And they survived the cyclone from a couple of months ago. Boy, have they got some stories to tell. She came in horizontally and there was not a, a dry square inch in here. Oh, really? Turned the table on the side and had to sleep in the kitchen. Nice. Mm. Yeah. It took seven years to build the treehouse, with Andy, the leaseholder on the island, building it at about the same time as he built the A-frame. He would wait every six months for the supply ship to come and he'd have a bit more timber, and he slowly built it. But it's a never-ending project. Kate and her husband are now building a pizza oven so that they can sell pizzas to passing yachties to help their income. But the adventure is not over for the day yet. We've decided to do the 4K hike to the homestead. Wattle that's out is absolutely beautiful. beautiful island that only has two couples living on it, has better pathways, more signs, with love and care everywhere than we saw on Great Keppel, the tourist island. It's just a beautiful feeling uh, along the whole work, not just the scenery but just the welcoming signs. We don't want to bother the leasees, Kate and her husband, so we'll just make the walk and have a look at the house. As we get close to the house, a call from the veranda beckons us up to come up for a cool drink. What a wonderful, friendly place. Oh, quick, 
a quick um, history on the on the place. Right. Well, my cousin Andy um, sailed past on Southern Maid, and he was going to go up to the Whit Sundays and do tourism with backpackers. And he came across the island and naturally fell in love with it. And initially thought he'd sell the lease to an American, but he loved it so much that he stayed and found that he could make an income through selling produce to passing yachties and continuing the traditions of having goat stews. Uh, turns out Jimmy Joss, the very first residence here in 1876, he used to sell goat meat and milk to passing yachties. The uh, original goats were put here in 1874 to feed sailors by the Royal Navy. We also put coconuts around the islands and wild really? pigs and various other things. Fortunately here it was just the goats. And um, so we're sort of continuing the traditions that were started uh, over a hundred years ago by the European pioneers. And it turns out that there weren't any um, permanent Aboriginals living here. They were migratory, following food, I suppose, you know, the turtles and the fish. But the history of the island is just so fascinating. It's a microcosm of Australian history. Jimmy Joss was looking for gold. Then the next people to come, the Armitages, were growing coffee. They'd come from India. And then um, they then also made money off sheep. And the next were the Whites, who made 44 years sheep farming here. When did you guys arrive? Well, we arrived 2008. My cousin Andy had the lease 1964 until um, he passed away in 2003. But um, we couldn't get back here for a while because uh, it was it was during the dark times. The island got lost to um, um, a con man who destroyed everything that Andy and the Hicklings had built up over the years. So 2008, we won back the island and we've been fixing everything ever since. And now, thank God, by the grace of God, it is in um, good condition again. And now we just need lots of hard workers to help us get the garden growing and being self-productive again. It was a political decision to make the island mainly national park and it was due to uh, a very good friend of the people who was the head ranger at the time who um, let it be known that they, the politicians can't make the whole island a national park so it's too important to the people. Hence we've got what they call the conservation park which is in between the short track and the long track. Well, really the whole island should be designated under that and allow us to manage it um, as it has always been managed and keep the rangeland animals under control, provide meat and produce for people and a bit of an income. Do you want to explain, uh, you know, uh, it's actually, as a yachty, you're not sure whether you should be coming wandering up and wandering oh. through. You're, you're wondering whether you're, you're going to burn poes or not. So no, you, no, no, no. Please, please come on up and, and visit and join the yacht club and uh, enjoy the history that's up here, all the old photographs and the, uh, the models built by Harold White. And, um, yeah, enjoy the amazing ambience of the island. It, it's so different, the walk, both long track and short track both different terrain and habitats and um, different times of year, of course. All the flowers right now, we've got these beautiful acacia flowers out. And um, yes, it's just lovely. Not very many butterflies this year, but we've still got blue tiger butterflies. And it's just a magic place. And it's the people's island. So come and buy the produce, support the island and uh, it's safe enough to walk anywhere because of course you can walk on the National Park side and um, if we're in we normally invite you into the homestead to come and say hello and have a refreshing drink. Well it's been, it's been beautiful, the drink's been beautiful and, <laughs> and you're a lovely person, it's been beautiful meeting you, thank you. Well I'm, I'm glad that we're able to continue to look after the island for the people by the grace of God who made it all possible.
We got this from Sydney a number of years ago, and we believe it was uh, one of four that came from the Korean War. It was a American Army machine originally. So some poor soul got the job of doing these by the hundreds. <laughs> Could <laughs> you tell me a bit about the, uh, the Percy Island Yacht Club? Well, the Yacht Club was formed at suggestion of a couple of yachties because we needed public insurance under the agreement with the government to live here. And they've already said, well, you're looking after the place for the yachties predominantly, so have the Yacht Club. We only need to get uh, 40 members a year, and that will pay for the insurance each year. So that's what we hope. So $100 goes towards the insurance and $50 goes to pay for the burgee and the plaque and the tags. So it's $150 a lifetime membership. And then you can walk into any yacht club you want <laughs> and sign up as a friend of the Yacht Club Association because you're Percy Island Yacht Club. Unique. So there you go, Shay. I said stand up, the proud presentation. Ready to go over the head and the glasses. Glasses off, that's it. Glasses off. It's like and being really knighted, isn't it? <laughs> Remember 265 <laughs> Percy Island Yacht Club. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> As you walk up to the homestead, you're wondering whether you should be bothering them, but they're, they're just the most loveliest people and make you feel very welcome. So please join the Percy Island Yacht Club. This is the, the homestead of Captain John Cook Till uh, from 1880 to 1887. So this obviously seen better days, but uh, this would have been a bit of harsh living before the homestead that we know it today. The remains of the home site and the rock walls were all hand laid, a huge effort from uh, him and his daughters and his wives. Poor man, two wives. Ooh. I suppose there's good and bad with that. Time for a swim. Get the dust off us. Well, it's been a great day, but as the sun sets, that's the call. We've got to get ready to head to the Percy Hilton. We've got to leave our gift, our sign, our mark in the, in the Yacht Club or the A-frame. It's time to party and say goodbye to our newfound friends and leave Percy Island tomorrow. So why do we do it? Why? Look at the sun. Why wouldn't you? It's beautiful. <laughs> Wind is free. Beautiful. Yeah, we don't have to worry about these goddamn power charges, do we? I can't see the Hi, I'm Jet, and I'm on board for the day. We're leaving. And what was it like? What was Percy like? It was fun. I'd give uh, the Percy's a double thumbs up. Well worth the stay. Uh, a lot of people say that it's very rolly. We were lucky. We got excellent weather and uh, it was beautiful and calm. It's just so friendly and welcoming. So you definitely go for a wander up to the homestead and say hello and join the Percy Yacht Club. It's well worth uh, keeping, keeping the facilities there. So hopefully you enjoyed the stay on the Percy, so did we. Uh, we're, off, we're off to Digby Island now. That's only a four hour sail. Then to Mackay, Keswick Island and Brampton Island. Boy, have we got a lot for you next time. See you then. Wonder whether the island would be better recognised as just cultural heritage 
rather than pretending it's to be a national park. Um, I don't know what people's views are of this and I'd be very interested if you write to percyisland at gmail.com and let me know if you think it should be cultural heritage or national park. Thank you. Oh, 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 oh,